What's up everyone, I hope you all are doing well and today I'll be going over my resume that got me my internship at Facebook and I'll also be going over my resume that got me into Google and I'll show you some tips and tricks that I might want you to implement in your resume. So let's just get started. So the first thing that you must keep in mind is that your resume should be clean and concise. The fonts should be readable because recruiters are scanning hundreds of resume every day and they're not going to spend a lot of time on your resume. So you don't want them to struggle to read your resume because that is the basic part you don't want to get that wrong otherwise it is going to diminish your chances to get that interview make sure that your font your font size and your margins are consistent throughout your resume so that it's easier for your recruiter to read and go through it now the resume size that I recommend is one page because the recruiter doesn't have all the time in the world to read your resume you want to capitalize that one page to put in all of the relevant experiences that you have to show for that required position and I would say one page is a good way to show off your skills and just put the roles that are relevant to the position that you're applying for you don't want to put like leadership position or like campus positions because that is really going to be irrelevant for the required position it's going to waste space it's going to waste the recruiters time now the third thing that I want to mention before I get into my own resume is that you should have five sections at least in your resume the first one being the header which is showing off your name and details maybe your github page or your portfolio the second being the education section this is really important and you want it to be in reverse chronological order that is your latest education to show first and then the third one being your work experiences the fourth being projects and the fifth one being your skills now these are five very very important sections I think that leadership positions are a bit irrelevant if you're applying for internships or new grad positions because you really want to show off what you have done for your work experiences and what the position really requires if you don't have that relevant experience then it might be you know arguable that you should put some leadership positions to make up for that space or to show off that you might have done something useful. Now that I'm done mentioning some of the basic points that you want to keep in mind, let's just dive into the resume that got me my internship at Facebook. So we can see over here that I have my resume and the first thing that you might notice is that I've included some symbols, I have some coloring and that is some UX perspective that I really put in. I really researched upon the fonts that I want to you know keep for my resume and I chose Corbel and because it's very easy to read, the font size is 11 and it's consistent throughout for the text for the bullet points. I think that this is a good size because if you want to to like maintain the information as well as well as make it readable I think that that is a good font size for you to keep and apart from that we can see that I have my header over here where I show off my name I put in a different color so that you know my resume really stands out from the other plain resumes I have you know my symbols where I've mentioned my number this is my old number so it doesn't matter I've measured my email address my github page which is really important because you want your github or your portfolio to be visible to your recruiter so that they can really view your projects or whatever you have done I also have my LinkedIn available and moving on I have my education section where I've only put my university experience you don't really need to put in your high school experiences I don't think that it is going to be relevant for new grad or internship positions just put in your university experiences and that should suffice so as you can see I've also put in my CGPA you know you can omit your CGPA it really matters on where you're applying from for example it's like a cultural thing in the US like GPA is starting to matter lesser as compared to maybe like a place like Pakistan or maybe like India it might matter more if you have like less decent GPA and you're in the US I would say just omit it don't put it there they're not really going to check for it they're going to look for your relevant work experiences and that is going to really matter more in the long run as well you can see that I have put the dates these are really important just make sure you're putting your dates and relevant coursework so this may differ from the position to position that I'm applying for so if I'm applying to maybe like artificial intelligence position I'll put AI if I'm applying to web then I'll just put my web based courses that I took in my university so that is basically the education section and it's an important section that you want to show off in your resume next this is like a bit of like a debate whether the work experience should come first or the skills should come first I think it really depends on you on how you want it to go in some of my resume I really put my skills on the top and like work experiences beneath my skills because it serves the order correctly I guess but then again like work experiences first also work for me so this resume basically got me my interview at Facebook and you can see that I put my work experience that is the most relevant relevant on the top and you might notice that all of my bullet points are in past tense and this is really important you want to keep your bullet points consistent it should be themed in past tense whether you are doing it in present or the past it doesn't matter you should always bullet your work in past tenses now another thing to notice over here is that I didn't like separate it into leadership positions because most people what they do is is that they will put like teaching assistant in a separate section I think that that really wastes space especially because as an intern or new grad 
they don't really expect you right to have like a lot of experience so you should put like ta ship under your work experience because i think that it really goes hand in hand into what the position is requiring the bullet points over here they're not really you know that well written i would say what you want to keep in mind while writing your bullet points is what you did what kind of an impact you did and how you basically did it if you theme all your bullet points according to these three rules i think you'll be really good enough you'll stand out really perfectly i think that numbers really matter in a resume because they show off what you have really done with the work that you were given in this case i don't have a lot of numbers but you know I, I was a student so it might work for me but if you put in more numbers it's going to like favor you a lot and you can see that i had this ui ux developer position as well so i didn't have a lot of like software experience so i put in my ui ux experience as well to make up for some of the space and then i had this montrose college experience which was a very old internship where i basically did nothing but i still you know phrased it in a way that it might make me seem that i did a lot of things the thing is that if you have some kind of an experience that you can justify the points make sure you write it but if you can't really justify your points make sure you're not writing it i've seen a lot of people do a few things like while they're writing their projects what they do is is that if they're applying right and they know that they'll be done in a month with the project they'll just write it down i think that that is not a bad technique you can do that so if you're working on a project currently you can just mention it on your resume because the thing is that by the time when you're getting your interview you might actually be done with it so you might be able to show it off as well so i think that that's a good idea it's going to give you motivation to finish your project as well and the next section that i have is the project section so i have a bunch of projects listed over here i think two to three projects is more than enough and one thing you can notice is that they aren't descriptive enough as i did for my work experiences which is you know ironic in itself i think that they should have been more descriptive and the, like the thing that i mentioned earlier what you did what kind of an impact it made and like how you did it i think that it should be consistent with that i you know mentioned the technologies that i work with i think that's important because it really shows the recruiter that you have worked with these technologies that you have some kind of an experience with these technologies when the position differs and it requires a different kind of technology let's say that i was applying now to a cloud position and i have had some experiences with cloud or like some projects with it i would just swap out the projects i would just swap the projects and mention my cloud based one i wouldn't send this resume to the cloud based positions so you want to keep this in mind that you have to make some minor changes to your resume while you're applying to like different kind of positions you don't want to send one resume to all of the positions and the last section that i have is the skill section where i have like proficient intermediate beginner and i've listed a bunch of technologies i think that this also now that i think back to it is a bit irrelevant that you know i'm mentioning like beginner technologies also like how do i define proficient intermediate or beginner i think that you don't really need to divide it into sections you can just keep it in one line and that would be better just mentioning the technologies that you are like proficient in i think the thing that i did was that i wanted to put in as many keywords as i could so i just framed it like this so i if i'm applying to a different position i would also edit this and just put those additional technologies into the beginner section big brain the resume that got me my job at Google isn't that different at all. Rather, I just added my Facebook internship experience into the already existing resume and that is it. But I'll show you guys still. So here I have my resume that got me into Google. And you can see that I really moved the skills to the top because I really thought that it made more sense because skills being on the top like really shows off what you know. And then the work experience and the projects justifies how you use those skills in your work experiences and in your projects. I think that it makes more sense in the flow of things like how it is read you can notice my gpa decreased a bit and that is because you know i was applying for internships it takes a lot of time so keep that in mind that it might impact your gpa as well and the rest of it is the same i didn't really make a lot of changes to it you can see i even have the same projects listed over here so yeah i didn't really build that much projects i changed the position to backend engineering intern and this really you know differed on what kind of a position i was applying for if i was applying to a backend position i would just name it backend engineering intern if i was a applying to software I would just name it software engineering intern so you could play around with these things to see how it goes for you as well I was just trying to catch all of the keywords I guess I don't know if it's like the best practice or not but you know it worked for me so I hope that you found this to be really insightful I think that the key thing to keep in mind is that you should always be clean concise you should do some research on the type of font and the font size that you're using because the recruiter isn't going to spend a lot of time on your resume you want to make it easier for them you want to have a color contrasting that is readable because I've seen people 
use like hideous colors on their resume because it's not readable at all. I would suggest that you keep it basic, white background, black ink on top, and don't experiment a lot with it. You can use colors like this for your heading, but that is the maximum that you should do. You shouldn't really experiment with it. Keep one page. I think one column is best because one column is readable because the user eye basically scans in an F pattern. So it's much more readable that way. I think two columns is, is much harder to read. So I think that one column is the key to go. So I hope that you found this video to be insightful. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and let me down in the comment section below whether you found it insightful, whether you have some tips for me for my resume because I know this isn't perfect. I was just showing you what I did for myself. So yeah, if you have any other tips, just let me know or let us know and down in the comment section below. And as always, see you guys in the next video.